nitrogen 4 oxide the brown gas with a pungent irritating smell now in our lesson today i have planned such fun activities for you as usual number one we are going to discuss how to prepare nitrogen 4 oxide in the lab two what are its physical properties and last one what are the chemical properties of the no2 gas so let's dive into it now if you want to prepare nitrogen 4 oxide in the lab you can do so through two different ways number one by reacting copper metal with concentrated nitric 5 acid so copper reacts with conk nitric 5 acid to form number one copper 2 nitrate nitrogen 4 oxide and of course water now the nitrogen 4 oxide that is formed is collected using downward delivery method why because it's denser than air now, of course, if you need to collect dry NO2 gas, you can pass it through a drying agent. So you can use concentrated sulfuric 6 acid or anhydrous calcium chloride. Either of these will serve the purpose. Now, a point to note. You cannot use calcium oxide as a drying agent in this case. And the reason for this is because calcium oxide is, of course, basic. Nitrogen 4 oxide is an acidic gas, so these two will react with one another, which defeats your purpose. So, calcium oxide is a no no. Nitrogen 4 oxide can also be produced by heating a metal nitrate. Now, of course, you're going to choose the nitrate of a metal that is moderately reactive. You know, we're talking about uh, lead, copper, zinc, calcium, and such. But Lead 2 nitrate is the one that is most suitable. Now, before I get into this, let me just explain why are we heating a nitrate in the first place? Let me take you back to your Form 2 knowledge. So, nitrates, all nitrates actually decompose on heating, but the nitrates of the moderately reactive metals, you know, the ones I've just listed, decompose to form an oxide, nitrogen 4 oxide, and ding dong. So they can be used as a source of nitrogen 4 oxide. So on heating, they decompose, leading to the production of this gas. Now out of these metal nitrates, the one that is the most suitable is lead 2 nitrate. And the reason for this is because it's not hydrated. What do I mean by this? This simply means that it does not have water of crystallization. Now, if there had been water of crystallization, it would interfere with the preparation of the gas since nitrogen 4 oxide is quite soluble in water. So, lead 2 nitrate is the most suitable because it's not hydrated. So, on heating lead 2 nitrate, it decomposes to form three products, lead 2 oxide, nitrogen 4 oxide, and oxygen gas. Lead 2 oxide being a solid will remain where it is, but oxygen and nitrogen 4 oxide will flow out. Now, we need to find a way that will separate these two gases such that we end up collecting both separately. Now, what will happen is that the mixture of gases is then passed through a U-tube surrounded by ice-cold water. Now, the purpose of the ice-cold water is to condense the nitrogen 4 oxide to form a pale yellow liquid called dinitrogen tetraoxide, N2O4. Now, the reason why this is possible is because when the temperatures are low, nitrogen 4 oxide condenses to form a liquid. In fact, nitrogen 4 oxide has a boiling point that is quite low, 22 degrees Celsius. Oxygen gas then passes on and is collected over water because it's slightly soluble in water. And there we have it. Let's summarize this by listing the possible observations. Now, there are actually four observations. Two will be in the test tube, one in the YouTube, and the last one, of course, where oxygen is being collected. Now, let's start with whatever happens in the test tube. Now, I'm going to base the observations on the products that are formed. You know, the lead to oxide, nitrogen for oxide, and oxygen gas. Now, in the test tube, you're going to observe an orange residue. Now, this is going to turn yellow on cooling. Now, the reason for this is because lead 2 oxide is yellow when cool, but on heating turns orange. Now, since lead 2 oxide has been formed and since we have heating taking place, it's going to be orange in color, but on cooling it turns to yellow. You're also going to observe brown fumes of nitrogen 4 oxide in the test tube. Now, moving on to the YouTube, 
you're going to see a pale yellow liquid being formed. And this, of course, is the dinitrogen tetraoxide. Now, in the gas jar where oxygen gas is being collected, you are going to observe bubbles of a colorless gas. And there we have it. Now, moving on to the physical properties, nitrogen 4 oxide is a brown gas. Now, this is a distinctive characteristic of NO2. Whenever you do a practical and you find that there are brown fumes being formed, that is NO2. It has a pungent, irritating smell and it's poisonous. What about its density? It's denser than air and that is the reason why it can also be collected by downward delivery. And the last one, solubility. It's quite soluble. In fact, it's highly soluble in water. It dissolves to form an acidic solution. Moving on to the chemical properties, our first one has to do with dissociation of nitrogen 4 oxide. At room temperatures, nitrogen 4 oxide exists at equilibrium with dinitrogen tetraoxide. Nitrogen 4 oxide is, of course, a brown gas. Dinitrogen tetraoxide is a pale yellow liquid. Now, this equilibrium can be shifted whenever there's a change in factors such as temperature and pressure. So let's focus on temperature. At room temperature, these two are going to be at equilibrium. But if you were to lower the temperature, such as by cooling, what will happen is that it condenses to form dinitrogen tetraoxide. So essentially, it's going to dimerize. You're going to have two molecules of nitrogen 4 oxide joining together to form one molecule of dinitrogen tetraoxide as such. Now, if you were to heat it, what will happen is that the molecules of dinitrogen tetraoxide are going to break down to form nitrogen 4 oxide. So you're going to observe a change in color with the flask turning a dark brown color due to the presence of NO2. Our next property is its reaction with water. So as stated before, nitrogen 4 oxide is highly soluble in water. It dissolves in water to form an acidic solution. The acidic solution contains two acids. So it's actually a mixture of two acids. You're going to have nitric 5 acid and nitric 3 acid as seen. Moving on, reaction with alkalis. So nitrogen 4 oxide can react with alkalis, you know, soluble bases such as potassium hydroxide, sodium hydroxide and such. It can react with this, leading to the formation of two salts and water. Yes, you had me right. It actually forms not one, but two different salts and water. Now, the reason why this reaction is possible is because nitrogen 4 oxide is an acidic gas. So, if you have sodium hydroxide and you pass nitrogen 4 oxide, you bubble nitrogen 4 oxide gas into it, these two are going to react with one another, leading to the formation of sodium nitrate, sodium nitrite, and water. Now, let me break it down for you. How does this happen? Going back to the solution that is formed when nitrogen 4 oxide dissolves in water. So, it forms two different types of acids, nitric 5 acid and nitric 3 acid. These two acids are the ones that react with sodium hydroxide, leading to the formation of two different salts. Sodium hydroxide reacts with nitric 5 acid, forming sodium nitrate. Sodium hydroxide also reacts with the nitric 3 acid to form sodium nitrite. And there you have it. Now guys, in case someone is wondering, ah, where are we getting the acids in the first place? Let me break it down further for you. If you bubble nitrogen 4 oxide in a solution of sodium hydroxide, the first thing that will happen is that the nitrogen 4 oxide will dissolve in water that is present. Remember, sodium hydroxide solution will contain water molecules. So the nitrogen 4 oxide will dissolve in the water molecules forming the two acids. And then the two acids will react with sodium hydroxide forming the two salts. Now moving on, combustion. Does nitrogen 4 oxide support combustion? No, neither does it burn. But you will find that if you were to take a burning substance, introduce it into a gas jar containing nitrogen 4 oxide, it will continue to burn. So what does this mean? Does it support burning? No, it does not. But when temperatures are high, 
you'll find that nitrogen 4 oxide dissociates it breaks down leading to the formation of nitrogen 2 oxide and oxygen gas so it's actually the oxygen gas that supports the continued burning okay let's do an example let's imagine you have magnesium metal place it on a deflagrating spoon burn it and then take the deflagrating spoon insert it into a gas jar containing nitrogen 4 oxide now the burning magnesium will emit heat so this heat will cause nitrogen 4 oxide to dissociate into nitrogen 2 oxide and oxygen gas the oxygen gas that is present will cause magnesium metal to continue burning so essentially you're going to have magnesium reacting with no2 to form magnesium oxide and nitrogen gas and that ladies and gentlemen is a summary of the amazing properties of nitrogen 4 oxide 